Today I'm going to show you uh, uh, a continuation of a flower display I did last month. And uh, like I said, I'm going to show you some varieties from each family, from small trees right through to ground covers. And uh, to start off with it, uh, this one is Eucalyptus torquata, or the coral gum. A lot of people have said that over the years they've bought a tree that, uh, that, 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 that's been told that only grows to say 15 feet and they grow, they end up about 40 feet like the river gums and the blue gums. So uh, each month I'll try and give you one that grows to 15 feet that uh, is a nice little, has a nice little canopy, five or six metres that will give you just a nice gentle shade in all soils, in heavy soil, light soil, sand. And there's uh, one of the oldest uh, flowering gums in West Australia. It's been grown for many years in the coral gum, Eucalyptus torquata. It's a little, it's a little beauty, so, uh, and it's a uh, late spring, summer flowering. Another one, almost identical, is uh, Eucalyptus erythronema. I haven't got any flowers to show you, but that's uh, a deeper colour in a red. So those two are good little small trees. And I have had the, the macrocarpas on before, but a lot of people are still a little bit confused about them. Uh, this one I'll show you first is Eucalyptus macrocarpa, the rose of the west, only grows from one to two metres, with small foliage. And the big one, Eucalyptus macrocarpa mottle car, as you can see the big flowers there, grows to five metres, uh, it's about 15 feet. It's, uh, they're both mallees, when I say mallees, but uh, they, they branch, they're not trees. So what you've got to do, when you start them off there, you've got to, uh, don't be afraid to, to prune them. After they're flowered, when they get to that size, you can, just, you can just take all of this off, like so. And you'll be surprised that all that will mallee out. It will come out like a shrub again. So if they haven't flowered, a lot of people said, well, it hasn't flowered. You say, keep saying pruning them after flowering. But if it hasn't flowered, prune them in summer. All our growth is in summer, so don't be afraid to give them a trim, so, and you'll find that they'll come away nice and bushy. If you've let it, let it get away really big, it's grown really woody, and it's got this type of foliage, this type of uh, growth here, really woody, you can still take it back. You can still cut this big wood, like so, and it will come away from this type of growth. That applies to all eucalypts, melaleucas, bottle brushes, you can take them right back to this type of wood and it will shoot out. So there's another bit on pruning. Just taking a tiny little bit off the top is, is no point because they, they grow so quick in our climate, uh, you can take them right back. If you've bought a plant and it's, you've planted it and, and it's gone twice as big as you want, don't pull it out, prune it back and you'll get more satisfaction out of it. So there's a little bit on the mallees. As I've said, uh, in, in each family there's something exciting and this particular one is no exception. Verticordia grandis, uh, or our scarlet, almost bottle brush-like, uh, is definitely one of our most famous verticordias, the scarlet red verticordia. Not only is it magnificent in its flower, but its foliage is as elegant as well. And it flowers almost all the year round. You can see there from the old flowers that have been going through spring, the summer flowers, early summer flowers, and the buds there coming to take it right through the year in Verticordia grandis. Now, a lot of people have been uh, very frustrated they can't get any, any uh, plants in any nurseries. Well, this is, the reason is, is because it is very difficult to start. So I thought I'd explain that. Um, a lot of nurseries uh, have difficulty in growing it, including me. I, we all have a lot of trouble, so uh, they will be available probably in, in future years. But this one, for some unknown reason, is very hard to grow from cuttings. But if you uh, where, where, if you had it on the farm or, or you had an opportunity to get it, you just take the tip off it like so and you, you just strip the bottom leaves like so there and you can grow it from those tips like there. Obviously you put it in a, in a clean uh, river sand mix or something clean and cover it up if you're propagating it in the summer. We propagate all our verticordias in the summer so um, if you've got the opportunity to get a piece uh, have a go and you might preserve probably one of our most famous verticordias. And similarly with uh, another one from down the south is uh, Regelia valutina or commonly known sometimes as the Barron's Regelia. It comes from down the, the Barron range but it also has a red type little bottle brush flower. Uh, and as I've said previously 
Not all bottle brushes are calistamins. Move away and look at some of the other varieties, the Beaufortius and the Melaleucas, and as I said, the Regelias are very elegant little flowers. Uh, but unfortunately with this one, it won't flower in the sand. It's just uh, one of those things. It's a little bit like um, uh, several other things, Banksia coccinea, which I'm going to explain in a minute. Um, in Perth sand, it's just bottomless sand. It's very deep. Uh, but where they come from, they're in gravel. So they'll flower. They're hard and they, they, they don't, haven't got the vigorous growth. But in Perth sands, the, the Regelia valutina would be worth growing just for its foliage alone. It'd be worth growing up against a picket fence or Super 6 fence. It's a really nice background shrub. So if you're in the hills or heavy soil or clay, granite, laterite, uh, that's a good little selection, but if you're in the sand, don't count on getting any flowers from it. Again, a melaleuca, one of the uh, better melaleucas, the summer flowering melaleucas, is melaleuca huguli, or the chenille honey myrtle. And you can see there, it's, it's just coming out into flower. Beautiful plant, terminal little white bottle brush flowers. Grows naturally on the coast from, say, Gelton, in the limestone sand dunes there, right down the coast all the way on the west coast of West Australia, southern coast of West Australia. The Melaleuca huguli, it's probably its uh, main beauty is that it's a uh, pure white. Uh, it's a large shrub, two to three metres, two metres wide, flowers in summer, so it's got a really good uh, all-round ability. But the fact that it comes from the coast doesn't mean it won't grow in other situations. If you're right in, inland in the country, you could still take it from one like this that grows in, in the sand back into, say, clay, and it's very versatile. All melaleucas are very versatile, so uh, as I s I've always said, um, don't be restricted to those ones. Uh, and again, this one will prune fairly vigorously if you want to prune it back. I'd only say prune it if you have to prune it, prune it. Um, one of the banksias, as I've said, is uh, Banksia coccinea, our famous scarlet banksia. Uh, a lot of people are attracted to it, but again, like the Regili, it won't flower, definitely will not flower in Perth sand. So for people in the Perth sand, it would be better to select a, one of the other banksias uh, if you want something red or, or another species. But for people in uh, down south, Albany, right across the southwest of West Australia, or even up as far as probably uh, the Darlings in the, in the hills would, would, would be able to flower them. But uh, it, it definitely wouldn't uh, be worthwhile uh, growing it for flowers in per sand, but you could probably grow it for foliage. It also has a nice uh, foliage. Um, you can see there the little uh, little banksia leaves. Uh, they're all all worthy of growing from the Albany banksia. I have said talked about the sturt peas in the past, but I just thought I'd show it to you for the last time, for your last chance uh, to, to get them in. A lot of people are still a bit confused about it. Nectar seed. Uh, put it straight in the ground, quarter an inch deep, and you'll have uh, them starting. Once they germinate, sprinkle a little bit of fertiliser around them, any sort will do, not too much, just a, like salt. And once they get going, you'll find that you'll have a, a good ground covering, summer flowering annual all, all over. It'll go as far as 15 feet across. If you're in an area where you don't get frost, you'll find that it'll continue right through winter. That's a really good one in the Sturt Pea. I have said uh, many times uh, in the past that I can produce, keep producing a kangaroo paw every month. Well, I, I will, and uh, right up until late summer. But this little pink one is an exceptionally good one. It only flowers about a metre and a metre and a half high. It's the evergreen selection Anigazanthus flavidus, uh, and this has been nicknamed or, uh, Pink Joey. That's its uh, common name, I guess. Um, evergreen kangaroo paw. Uh, pink joey. But I, I did want to say something about the, the kangaroo paws. If you, um, if you pick them, uh, you can pick them uh, just above the leaf there, like so. If you fast pick them, take it away from there, uh, it'll flower again. It'll come out of there and there and there. It'll come out right the way down. So if you pick them like that, each time uh, you pick it, it'll continually to flower out of those nodes there or flowering leaf stems so if you start at the top pick it then start there and then pick it 
it'll, it, you'll get about, you'll continue and you'll get three to four good flowerings right throughout the year. That's a, a little handy hint, handy hint on picking kangaroo paws. One of the, one of the best flowering, uh, low-growing shrubs I think we have is uh, Schultzia involucrata. It comes in this uh, little uh, tryptamine type flower. It's a very attractive vase picking one. Um, different, most tryptamines seem to flower in the winter and the Schultzias are a lot later. And this Schultzia involucrata, there's several forms of it. The, the, this particular form that comes from the Ger Geraldton region, all uh, in the Geraldton surrounds, uh, grows up to about two metres. And the little form around the metropolitan area is almost prostrate, say half a metre high and a metre across. Both ex excellent little summer flowering ones. It's a hard one, there's no common names, it's Schultzia involucrata. Uh, you'll just have to write it down and try and remember it. But I'd recommend that one in all so soil situations, uh, in, a, in an excellent little summer flowering one, um, in all soils. I have had the Hemiendras on before, but uh, the fact that it's such a, uh, an excellent summer flowering one, in all, all types, the ground cover up to a shrub, several colour, flower colour forms, several leaf colour forms and it flowers all summer so if you wanted to give it a, a bit of ground cover, splash of colour, uh, the Hemiandra is a good one. So from that one I won't spend a lot of time on that one because there's several others. Um, a lot of the, the Malaleucas uh, are good, good selections in summer too and this one is an excellent large flowering Malaleuca. Melaleuca needs a filler. Um, I think it probably in a lot of uh, catalogues they say it's only a metre or a couple of metres, but in actual fact it, is, it grows into a small paper bark tree. So watch out for its height if you're selecting Melaleuca and there's a filler. And that, this one definitely responds to a vigorous prune. You can cut it back to the limbs as hard as your arms and it'll respond in summer. And it's uh, an attractive little pom pom lavender type flower, summer flowering and it flowers on every terminal. So the more terminals you have, the more bushy you've got it, the more attractive it'll be. A little bit like a jolt and wax, you know, get into it pretty hard and you'll, you'll find it'll respond fairly well. I've, uh, I have also had the, the wedding bush on before, but you can see they're still flowering terrific there. I think it's one of our finest white flowering plants there, gentle white flowering there, and beautiful, elegant, green foliage. I don't think there could be a finer shrub in the wedding bush. But the, another reason why I was going to put those together, the red flowering gum comes in several colours. This one's withered a little bit with the heat, but you can get the idea there. Uh, and you could plant them in association. You put your trees at the back perimeter, coming down with your, say, a wedding bush, and then some of the smaller ones I've just described in front of them. And you'll have a, you know, a nice splash of colour in the, in the summer. So from that, the zamia palm, a lot of people have, uh, know the zamia palm foliage there. It's also, you can use that one to cut it for vase picking, a bit of the background decoration. But not many people would have seen the uh, flower there. That's the, the fruit there. And there's two, or the red seeds are enclosed in that like a big pineapple. It's a really interesting um, uh, seeds in, inside it. So that's the zamia palm, that's one of our natural palms in West Australia. And I just thought I'd also talk about, a lot of people don't uh, think much about the, the black boy. You see the black boy trunk, but they don't think much about the flower. Now you can uh, pick the black boy flower if you've got the opportunity to do it. Uh, it doesn't hurt the plant. You can pick the whole trunk off, it's thousands of flowers there, and it'll dry as well. That's the black boy flower. And Inside, and after they've flowered, this one here is a little bit more advanced. You can see all these little hard seeds here. And inside there, there's uh, little black seeds, if you can see that there. Little black seeds. Now, they'll be starting to set. Or oh, from Christmas on, they were setting, so they would be definitely set now. And if you've got those little black seed seeds out, you can put them in the ground and they'll grow. Black boys are very slow, but they're worthy and they're good fun so to grow them. So that's from the flowers to the seeds, uh, and it's a really interesting range. So again, there's an interesting range of flowers uh, in summer, and 
Until next time, cheerio.